Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and or listening to the podcast and welcome to my house. It's time for another ServiceNow Store Highlights episode. That's SSH version 03 2024 It is our third or fourth episode of March, but it's a special episode because two days ago on March 20th, the Washington DC release of ServiceNow dropped. We just had a special episode showing all of the new and updated applications that dropped on February 5th with early availability for Washington DC. So now here we are in March, March 20th, general availability happened for Washington DC. And on that day, a bunch of new apps and updates and fixes and stuff were released. So that is what's going to make up this weekly episode for March 22nd or SSH V0322-2024. You can see we've got 118 new or updated apps in this episode. That includes 19 compatibility updates, 29 fixes, 12 highlights, 37 minor updates, 12 new releases, and nine release notes fails. Let's jump right into the episode and take a look at what we've got going on here for those compatibility updates. If you're watching the video, you can see them on the screen, but let's just talk through them real quick. Enri Celebrate Employee Recognition Management, and then we have a bunch of SN-App-PAR-Components which are data visualization or platform analytics workspace components. I'll just read the tail end of those. Chart, drill down, configuration, component builder, config panel, create dashboard modal, data visualization wrapper, dynamic render, export modal, info content, info panel, insights panel, save data visualization, and we'll scroll down for the rest of them here. Scheduled export, share dialog, share info, SN-dashboard and SN-viz or viz-designer plus two more, Tier 44 Global Energy Intelligence with Digital Employees and WebEx Content Center or Contact Center all were compatibility updates to either to Washington DC, which was most of the ServiceNow ones, or Vancouver in a couple of the cases. So that's the compatibility fixes. There were also 29 fixes, so let's take a look at those. Catalog conversational coverage, configuration data management, content publishing, digital product release data model, employee center core, ERP integration framework, event management core, flow designer designer, flow generation, guided decisions, inflow block spoke, legal counsel center, legal request management. Let's scroll down here for some more. Microsoft Azure AD or Microsoft Azure DevOps board spoke. Omni Experience Standard Feature Set, Platform Analytics, Primary Data Integration with SAP, Process Mining, Process Mining Workspace workspace Components, and Service Graph Connector for Info info Box makes up page one. And then continuing on for nine more of them, Service Graph Connector for Microsoft Intune, Service Graph Connector for Microsoft SCCM, ServiceNow Legal Contracts, UKG Spoke, UXC Generative AI, Visibility Content, Vivid Charts, Workday HR Spoke, and Workflow Studio all had fixes associated with them. So either minor or a substantial number of fixes on a couple of them, but either way, they were fixes, which is typical right before a major family release, like we're seeing with Washington DC general availability, you get a bunch of fixes right before or right as a general release. So there's our 29 fixes. And similar to the fixes, we've got 37 minor updates. So let's cover those real quick. 1E, Service Catalog Connect, Apoxio Employee Hub, AWS Cloud Formation Spoke, BitSite for IT Service Management, BitSite for Security Incident Response, BitSite for Security Performance Management Connector, Book and Pay, Bot Interconnect, Box Spoke, Common Service Delivery, Contract Management Pro, and Contracts Core all had minor updates. Also, conversational integration with Microsoft Teams, Creator Doc, Doc Generator, Document Intelligence, Document Intelligence Admin, Fujitsu Stanza, Global Signs Atlas, PKIAAS Connector, and Impact Value Management HR also had some minor updates. Moving on to the back half of the list here, Impact Value Management ITOM, Impact Value Management ITSM, Legal Simple Contracts, Logic Monitor Data Exchange, Microsoft Word Add-in for ServiceNow Contracts, Now Assist in Conversational Catalog Request, Now Assist in Virtual Agent Designer, P2 
P2PE Manager, Procurement Case Management, Regology Regulatory Intelligence, Service Graph Connector for Microsoft Azure, and Service Graph Connector for Observability, Dynatrace, scrolling down to the rest here, just a few more left, Source to Pay Common Architecture, Source to Pay Workspace, Unified Developer Core, Word Document Templates, and X Matters. All 37 of those had minor updates, right? So little changes, minor updates, or as they're called in the store, a minor release, even though I snuck some minor releases into the highlights, but that was all of them for this episode, which leaves us with nine release notes fails. If you haven't seen uh, an episode or this series before, a release notes fail. I'll go ahead and show you one. Let's look at the Oracle EBS spoke. Um, This is a good example of not your typical release notes fail, but typically it's a repeated release notes, uh, meaningless release notes, or no release notes, or, you know, something else that I can't tell you what's new or what changed with that application. In this case, it got the release notes fail because they added or enhanced nine actions. Okay, well, which nine actions? Are they new actions? Are they existing actions? Like, if you went and added or enhanced nine of them, why not put a list of them? Um, So you can see they had other things here in previous uh, release notes, but for this release notes, all we had is added or enhanced nine actions. So they were like that or even worse, where there's just not a lot of information. So let's go through that list. Oracle eBusiness Suite Spoke Dependencies, Oracle EBS Spoke, Playbooks for Sourcing and Procurement Operations, Service Graph Connector for OT Base, Service Operations Workspace Express List App, UX Commons, Virtual Agent Adapter Common, Virtual Agent API, and VR Integration Add-on for OT Base. All were release notes fails, and that simply means Something got updated, there's a new version of it, but I can't tell you what's new or why it was updated because the release notes were a fail. Which brings us to the fun part, our new releases for this episode. So let's dive right in. First up is going to be Athena. Enhance your productivity with the power of generative AI. Key features. And we got a mouthful here. GPT article authoring, authoring... Gee, I'm sorry, I can't talk. GPT article authoring from a simple description. Article contents can be edited by describing the changes to make. For example, add additional information, remove technical jargon, full HTML support for well-formatted articles, integrate ServiceNow with OpenAI ChatGPT utilizing its powerful LLM for translation services to use with a dynamic translation framework. This spoke to text the language of the text and translate the text from one language to another. Precision and reliability, multilingual support, real-time translation, enhanced productivity, document Q&A offers an intuitive conversational interface that makes it easy to ask questions and get answers about your attachments, powered by ChatGPT, quick search, and real-time responses. There are two screenshots. It looks like at least two screenshots. Let's take a look at the first one. The first one is an action in Flow Designer. Uh, showing the incorporated chat GPT query and response into your flows via generic prompt spoke. Second screenshot is knowledge management or a knowledge AI assistant. Generate a new article. What would you like this article to be about? What would you this article to be about? I think is what would you like this article to be about? And then they put in a simple description to generate the content. If you haven't seen it already, I have a video doing this before all this got released. But uh, So you can do it on your own or you can use this app. Uh, next is showing the actual generated knowledge article. They're calling it a high-quality knowledge article in seconds. Next screenshot is the Q&A feature. So it looks like basically like a chat bot window popped up on a contract and somebody is asking uh, to them to summarize the document, summarize the contract in this case. Uh, Let's see, next is a translator feature. So on the left-hand side, we have an English knowledge article, and on the right-hand side, there is a German or translated knowledge article for the same content. Next screenshot is showing an incident translating fields conveniently, conveniently from over 85 languages. Next screenshot is showing the notes or activity log on a record. I don't even know what kind of record it is, but there is a translate work notes with ease. And then there's the video that I didn't click on in the beginning. So that is what's new. It's called Athena from TM Labs. Next up on the new releases is going to be DeepL Translator Service Spoke Pro by TM Labs. Let's scroll down to the key features here. Same people who just made the last one. Integrate service now with DeepL to use Integration Hub and Dynamic Translation. This spoke to text the language of the text and translates that text from one language to another. The pro version of our successful DeepL Translator Service Spoke by TM Labs app adds three big features that will improve and individualize your translation results. Glossaries. 
uh, manage and maintain DeepL supported glossaries to create customized, create custom translations with context specific words and phrases inside of ServiceNow. Capabilities add custom parameters to API calls to optimize translations for multiple sentences, restrict splitting, outline detection, and ignore tags. Metered connections monitor and force usage and limits of the user accounts to user needs. There are screenshots on this one. We'll skip past the video here and open up. First is the menu showing the uh, DeepL Translator Service Spoke menu items. And it looks like a kind of summary page or overview page. Next up is an incident record uh, showing the use case for translating the short description. Um, it says in German something about a server translated to not connected to the server. Uh, next screenshot is in Flow Designer showing a flow and using the DeepL Translator service spoke um, and showing the different um, actions. Check if limit is exceeded, create meter connection, decrease characters left, detect language, and translate text. Uh, next screenshot is showing the deep L uh, trans the menu again with capabilities. Um, yeah, I'm not sure the capabilities. So they've clicked on capabilities, like which I guess is here, and that brought up the screen um, over here, which says capabilities, and then it's listing uh, four capabilities: ignore tags, disable automatic outline detection, structured content, and restricting splitting. Uh, next screenshot is showing the disable automatic outline detection capability with a description that's a URL, an order, and then some tags down below. Next screenshot is showing a list of glossaries, one, two, three, four. Next screenshot is showing glossary one uh, with a source language of German, a target language of English, some text down below and target text. And uh, next screenshot is the synchronized glossaries. Uh, looks like a modal that popped up showing it succeeded 100%. And next screenshot is showing glossary one. Uh, and an unpublished option. Then we've got metered connection definitions, metered connection definition per month, and a dashboard with a giant, giant number for monthly usage. And uh, we're you know, back to a metered connection maybe, or showing the menu item there. Um, and now we're back to the video, the video that I didn't click on in the beginning. But that's what's new from the team also at TM Labs, like our previous one. Next new application is going to be eSignify Spoke. The included eSignify Spoke flow actions allow for flow designers to leverage their eSignify maps to integrate ServiceNow with DocuSign via Flow Designer. Key features allows eSignify developers to execute powerful eSignify maps from ServiceNow Flow Designer. The eSignify maps allow the customer to create integration solutions slash integrations integration solutions slash integrations, I think that's just an integration, between ServiceNow and DocuSign. There are three flow actions included in the spoke solution. The first will allow ServiceNow flow developer to execute any signified map from a flow. The other two actions are wait for conditions. The first waits for the envelope to be completed, signed by all recipients, and the second waits for each of the envelope recipients to sign the envelope. Let's go to screenshots here. First up is a giraffe request. Uh, in Flow Designer, showing an envelope uh, or a request being created, a map being executed, when the envelope is completed, showing the wait for signature action, updating the draft request record, logging something and ending the flow, then moving on to set flow variables in a do while loop. Next screenshot is a list of actions in Flow Designer, showing basically the actions that come with the spoke. Next screenshot is an eSignify portal. Next screenshot is a sample request for the draft request. Next screenshot is back to that flow outline that I just detailed earlier. So that's what's new from the team at General Networks Corporation. Next new application is Fujitsu HRSD Launchpad, a transformative platform to unify employee experiences across the enterprise, enhancing engagement and reducing costs. Key features on the functional side, 34 pre-configured services common to HR teams, 20 online HR forms, enhanced email notifications to employees, collateral to support implementation preparation and OCM activities, HR, an HR advisory lead with real HR industry experience embedded into your project, optional at additional costs. Technical features on the foundational side, HR case management, configurable agent workspace for HR, internal HR knowledge management, auto case creation from email, ability to integrate with HCM systems using out-of-the-box posts for HR data profile, I'm sorry, for HR profile data population, dashboard and reporting, and on self-service, employee center pro portal, pre-configured HR taxonomy, 20 pre-configured record producers that correspond to those 20 online forums, I assume, 
Employee Facing Knowledge Management and HR Satisfaction Survey. No screenshots for this one, and so that's what's new from the team at Fujitsu Services Limited. Up next is going to be ICF Mission Tech Applications, Reduce Application Sprawl, Drive Revenue, and Meet Organizational Objectives. Key features on the functional side, create modern applications via low-code guided interfaces, connect processes to any data source across the organization, and improve user experience with continuous process improvement. On the technical side, maintain and evolve applications with low-code development, simplify complex cross-functional workflows with pre-built workflow nodes, and leverage machine learning, AI, or artificial intelligence, and robotic process automation to drive efficient processes. Scrolling up, we have no screenshots on this one either, so that's what's new from the team at ICF Resources, LLC. Next up from ServiceNow, Impact Value Management for CSM. Notice this is an innovation lab, not supported, no warranties, but we'll cover it anyway. Impact Value Management Data Collection Dashboard for CSM. Key features, pre-build performance analytics indicators or pre-built performance analytics indicators and dashboard. I want you to keep all that in mind. No screenshots on this one. And notice we have one for SAM or Software Asset Management. So we'll skip that one and move on to Kindrel Workflow Orchestration. Employee onboarding automation. Uh, we'll scroll down to some key features here. It eliminates human involvement in performing several tasks related to onboarding or offboarding of employees. Customers are expected to gain the following benefits by subscribing to the solution. Efficiency improvement, error minimization, and time saving and higher productivity. For an employee experience, follow-ups, delays, and rework on request fulfillment due to complex processes and human errors continue to be major causes for poor user experience and loss of productivity on part of the employees. Of the, employees. the processing time reduces from days or weeks to minutes, resulting in enhancement in overall user experience. Let's look at the screenshots we've got for this one. First up is a workflow image showing some ServiceNow tables, integration hub, um, an end user or manager, Active Directory through a mid server, and Azure AD through some uh, some flows, some uh, uh, flows or yeah, flow designer flows. Next up is a catalog screenshot showing the onboarding of a new employee. On the left-hand side is a bunch of information about that employee. On the right-hand side is a slush bucket for the different types of groups needed for IT, I guess, in this case. So you're just picking out picking out all the groups that might need access to. Interesting way to approach identity and access management there, but uh, hey, it's better than nothing. Uh, next screenshot is showing the systems context. In the center is EEWO, ServiceNow and Integration Hub. And then on the periphery, we have end user, approver, DevOps, Kindrel, email services, endpoint servers and apps, and ADLDAP management. Uh, all flowing into or out of that EEWO circle in the middle. Next screenshot is the workflow in image we already covered there at the beginning. So that is what's new from the team at Kindrel Inc. Next new application is going to be Otorio Incident Integration Incident Management for OT. This integration syncs Otorio's cases with ServiceNow Incident Module. They do have some screenshots after that brief description. First up is a view of major incidents. Next up is a look at a connection and credential alias for Otorio. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why they included that. Uh, next up is an incident record showing um, oil and gas distilling, distilling one asset not protected, critical vulnerability discovered, immediate action required. Um, interesting. Uh, interesting alert there. A uh, next screenshot is the industrial workspace showing an OT incident for PLC is broken. Next screenshot is back to that list of major incidents. And that's what's new from the team at Otorio LTD. Next new application is going to be Service Graph Connector for Splunk. Notice this is also an innovation lab application, not available in production, not supported, doesn't carry any warranties, but let's take a look. Frictionless integration for Splunk asset visibility. Uh, key features, automatically collect and map asset data from the Splunk product to your ServiceNow CMDB. No screenshots on this one, so that's what's new for the team at ServiceNow. Moving on to our next new application, Silver Fort Service Accounts Protection, Unified service account protection for ServiceNow CMDB. Key features, uh, it's an integration application for ServiceNow. 
Um, the ServiceNow provides complete protection for all service accounts managed by ServiceNow CMDB. Now, ServiceNow users can detect and manage all service accounts across hybrid environments. Using the Silver Fort platform, mutual customers can discover and protect their applications and service account managed by ServiceNow in one interface and apply automatic access policies to each account. In practice, it connects the ServiceNow CMDB user application relationships to the Silver Fort service account protection policy. It also supports service account risk information ingestion and extension added to user fields in Silver Fort. Organizations using this app in ServiceNow are now well equipped to reduce their attack surface area from compromised service accounts by having complete visibility into the account and the ability to prote proactively protect them with access policies. I felt like I just reread the same sentence over and over again in different ways. So I hope you found that helpful. I did not. The next first screenshot here is a uh, application account relationship. The next screenshot is showing the relationship editor. Third screenshot is showing a list of service accounts in another application, not ServiceNow. Uh, next screenshot is showing the Silver, Silver Fort application menu in ServiceNow. And then we're back to the first screenshot that we had there. And that's what's new from the team at Silver Fort LTD. Next and last new releases is Zoom in for Agent Workspace. Turn your ServiceNow solution into a one-stop shop for personalized product answers, key features, custom agent assist component for the Agent Workspace with Zoom in results. No screenshots on this one. So that is what's new from the team at Zoom in Software LTD. And that is our list of new releases, which leaves us with the highlights. Let's dive right in. First up is gonna be 1E CMDB Connect, updated version 2.0.1. And in this version, they have expanded device insights for improved data mapping and OS identification. They've removed the Tachyon references and updated business application name and discovery source name to 1E CMDB. They've improved logging for easier access and interpretation, ensuring better security and troubleshooting. And the CMD app now supports Windows servers. Wow, Windows servers. Um, okay, great. That's awesome. Thank you guys for the team at 1E. You've got another one here, 1E ITSM Connect, updated to version 5.0.8. And this version, it supports all features from the previous release, enhanced logic for managing role mapping of instruction sets, upgraded UI for streamlined single tenant configuration, enhanced incident resolution in service operations workspace, device details and instruction execution supported without saving the incident form. And there's a little note for the Vancouver release about some mid-server support if you're interested in that. Uh, and that's what's new from 1E. Next highlight is going to be Automate Pro was updated to version 8.0.0. And in this version, the control console has undergone a significant redesign to enhance user experience. It now features over a dozen customizable widgets that provide a personalized visual overview of Automate Pro test run and test run results data, allowing users to monitor the state of their data more effectively. It's also been updated to support OAuth. This secures the ServiceNow environment using the open authorization standard and allows customers to manage Manage OAuth tokens so authentication can be done without using basic authentication. It also supports Washington DC and the actions and checks library has been expanded to include support for configurable workspaces. This includes updates to existing actions slash checks as well as new actions slash checks to provide coverage on new configurable workspace functionality. Next highlight is going to be Checklist Pro. It was updated version 2.3.1 and in this version they uh, have introduced some new features. Advanced option for allowing custom widgets to appear on checklist approvals and checklist assignments in the service portal and employee center. Checklist Pro dashboard showing current configuration, tab 1. Operational information, tab 2. Assessment, tab 3, which provides analytics for identifying potential subscription cost savings. New catalog item, aiding checklist approval, checklist assignment, O&M activity, one-click option to enable slash disable inbound email response processing of checklist approvals and added parent task field to checklist approval slash checklist assignment records for no code condition builder logic for accessing the parent record when the parent is derived from task. There were also some bug fixes, checklist approval slash checklist assignment, assigned to field set to current user if closing an empty, if closing an empty or different from different than the assigned user. Change checklist approval slash checklist assignment email notification weight from 0 to 50 to allow developers to override the out-of-the-box notification. Uh, next up on the highlights, CMDB CI class models updated version 1.55.0. 
Um, and this is a, a, a longer update here. Let's just see, new non-CMDB table, radio band, added some new CMDB CI tables, wireless sector antenna structure, battery distribution fuse panel, radio network controller, transmission control unit, and voice switch. Added new tables to support OpenStack hosted in a private cloud. Uh, so we've got OpenStack object and OpenStack hypervisor view. The following attributes are discovered. Name, IP address, hypervisor technology, object ID, state, and version. They've added new classes. Let's see, patient monitoring, surgical instrument, lab equipment, patient implant, clinical device, diagnostic imaging, therapeutic device, and the firmware version attribute was added to CNDB CI underscore HC underscore device parent table. They've added the TNI attribute related IRE rule in the following CI classes, cloud service account, CMP price base, and CI Hyper-V cluster. Um, added missing read access control for CMDB read role on following class network topology root node. Added column to network gear. Added col or is virtual is the column they added. Added column radio type to the monitoring unit shelf. Added columns unit coverage type, radio frequency type, radio frequency modulation identifier code, radio type, and unit architecture to the base band unit class. It looks like there. Added columns to call server, mobile switching center, media gateway, voicemail equipment, private branch exchange, echo cancellation system, voice activity detection equipment, voice gateway, and those attributes or columns were link set name, node category, phone number, and mobile switching center. And they fixed added missing TNI related IRE rules. Updated a UI alignment for site, equipment, card, interface, and connection forms, and added class descriptions for cable, strands, and other TNI classes. Also added missing ACLs for CMDB network topology root node. And there were two defect defects. Realigned the UI for CMDB CI NI interface CI classes and fixed the configuration item label on the configuration item CI CMDB CI table. Whew. That was a long list, but helpful list of updates to the application CMDB CI class models. Next up in the list of highlights, CrowdStrike Falcon Spotlight for Vulnerability Response was updated version 3.0.0, and it adds performance improvements for importing vulnerabilities, updates the configuration to allow for easier filter selection, also allows for the creation for third-party vulnerability entries, and the authentication configuration has been updated to used application registry profiles. Existing users from below version 2 will need to reconfigure their authentication following the configuration guide. Next up in the list of highlights is Delinea Cloud Suite Integration, updated version 2.1.0, and in this version they implemented affected and impacted CI validation for incident and change requests, added the below properties for affected and impacted CI validation on the property page, validate systems with affected impacted CI for incident and change request, and they added a new property to hide the Delinea tab on incident and change request forms. Uh, hide Delinea tab on change request and incident uh, is the name of the property. Uh, next up is also from Delinea, the Credential Resolver application updated to 4.5.0, which now supports Delinea Credential Cache validation and the Delinea Credential Resolver for the secret server, added a new parameter in the config.xml file for auto comment, created a new Delinea mid-server setup utility jar file for the creation of configuration parameters of privileged access service and secret server, and verified password rotation on check-in functionality with Delinea credential resolver for the secret server. Next up, discovery and service mapping patterns was updated to version 1.12.0. In this version, they've introduced new WebSphere message broker on Unix pattern supports IBM App Connect Enterprise 11 and also OpenStack Discovery Private Cloud. They fixed F5 pattern updates, the subject, the subject alternative name field, IBM HMC server pattern creates a relationship between all of the LPAR instances in the LPAR names with the processor pool. For Azure, Azure Cloud Discovery is inserting the valid value in the location reference field. Azure VM Instance, Uniform Scale Set Pattern Discover CPU and Memory Information. Azure VM Instance, Uniform Scale Set Pattern is enhanced. If there is no response from the API, then it gracefully terminates. 
Azure NIC LP pattern is fixed to populate the source native key value in the correct format. For Google, they've enhanced, this, they've enhanced the security on the Google Credential User Interface page, added an access control list restricting the user access to the appropriate role slash user group. And for Docker, the Docker pattern creates a relationship between the Docker engine and the Docker container. The Docker pattern populates the Docker local image, and they've changed the pure flash array storage pattern is disabled by default. Next up in the highlights is going to be Health 360 Degrees, updated to version 7.2.1. And this new release, they have eight new checks, eight new proactive warnings. Would have been helpful if you listed those out. New workspace actions, automated critical scan task creation, automated scan task creation for failed scans, scan score percentages, baseline deviations per product suite, mute rule expirations, and improved check accuracies. Next new highlight uh, next highlight, I'm sorry, is Service Operations Workspace Express List, updated to version 23.1.2. And in this version, they have Alert Assist in Express List, Manage Views, uh, or I'm sorry, Simplify and Enrich Alerts with Technical Analysis using Now Assist, Manage Views in Express List, Centralized Management of User Views in the Express List, Probable Root Cause in the Alert Preview Panel, Add Probable Root, probable root Cause tab to Alert Preview Panel and Express List, Add Alert Trends to the Alert Preview Panel, uh, they changed the aligned source icons and express list and integration launch pad, and they fixed loading time of large alert groups, UI for a long filter name, and live list filters when filtering complex columns. I feel like that was in our special episode, but I don't know for sure. Um, it looks familiar, but there was a bunch of ITOM-related now assist things, and uh, this kind of relates to it because this is ITOM in the service operations workspace. Last highlight for this episode is from ZoomIn. It was updated to version 7.7.0. In this version, they've introduced improvements, include the child filters of the selected parent filter in the case deflection search, KB article number included in Zoom and Analytics, added messaging that PDF previews in the case deflection are not available, added config to enable slash disable bottom pagination buttons on the topic tip page, and smart tables. They've also fixed some bugs, KB updated by customer, disabled attachments button on topic pages, this help button disappeared from case deflection preview and dynamic filters on the library page. And that, my friends, is our entire episode. Let's just take one last look. You just heard or saw 12 new releases, 12 highlights, 19 compatibility updates, 37 minor updates, 29 fixes, and 9 release notes fails. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share this video or podcast with someone who you think might be interested in what's new or what got updated in the ServiceNow store. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.